Well, hi everyone again. Today is the second day of our little introductory course. Uh, we are going to be dealing with uh, in our introduction to Hilbert space. So I say the same as the other day. If you want to ask anything during the lecture or at, at, at any point, you can ask me. Open your microphone, or if you don't want to open your microphone, you can ask on on the chat here on Google Meet, or maybe in the Discord server in order to have the answer, save it in some way in the Discord. Uh, let's begin, right? So uh, we are in the second, second day of the program. Uh, yeah, we are going to be dealing with in Hilbert spaces. So this is uh, uh, basically a little of the overview that we are going to be, of the material that we are going to be seeing today. Uh, I will try to mm, uh, begin with a very basic example that I guess every high school student will be used to uh, with in order to introduce introduce vectors. And after that, I will be jumping like very, <laughs> very high jumps, I would say, but <laughs> jumping to more general um, abstract uh, ideas. ideas. Uh, at the end, we will see Hilbert spaces. So this uh, might be a uh there are going to be uh, a lot of stuff that i believe is going to be difficult to understand but uh even though you might not un understand everything deeply uh my point is to uh, give you the the main idea and the concepts in order to more or less understand the thing because the the mathematical abstraction is uh quite general and it's also important to understand that so let's take uh, a right like in the sense that uh, just look at the big co concepts rather than just uh, losing your mind in the equations. And um, well, yes, that's the, the idea, right? So let, let's start with the, this quite simple uh, vector um, idea that we all have in our, our head. So normally when we are in high school, they uh, present us vectors as points in the space or well, I mean as arrows right they have a certain direction also uh, a lens that we call module normally or uh, um, the first very sample is usually the, the two-dimensional plane or Cartesian coordinates right so we can represent a point in Spain by any uh, combination of the x uh, coordinate and the uh, y coordinates, right? Um, so uh, just basic things that I guess you have, you are, you should be familiar with or have seen at, at some point that uh, you represent a vector in some coordinates uh, using this notation, and you can calculate the module or the norm of a vector by uh, using this formula. I mean, this comes from the Pythagoras theory, right? Yeah, you have this will be the, this coordinate and also the x coordinate. So you have to square everything and take the root in order to get the the length, right? Because the the norm of the of or the module, right, is going to be the the length of the vector. Very well. Uh, apart from that, you can also, I mean, you could also write vectors in other coordinates and the vector is still the same you are just writing writing it in a different way so for example just using quite basic trigonometric stuff you can calculate the sinus and the cosinus of of this uh, of this angle and using that you can easily uh, take x um and y and uh, put it inside this expression so the vector will uh, would look like this, and in here is quite a useful way to write vector in the sense that you just write the vector using the the module, um, using the module and also uh, a an unitary vector, right? I mean, the, uh, in physics, I don't know if you have seen this before or not, but the only difference between this and this is just because this vector here has a uh, uh, module one right i mean 
is just using the this hat is just for a way to say that that the module is one, right? So it's just a vector that has a direction. Um, yeah. So that's basically it. So uh, I hope this sounds everything sounds familiar. So with vectors that I here as a few samples, we can do different operations, right? I mean, for example, if you have here uh, a module of a few vectors uh, that I have written here uh, arbitrary arbitrary vectors, and for example, you can uh, let's like say uh, do multiplication, right? You can multiply a vector like whatever you want it. Well, right? this is minus two times w vector, so you get uh, the multiplication is quite straightforward since you multiply here the numbers and that's it. Also, you can sum or uh, subtract vector vectors, right? And um, for example, if you want to uh, uh, take the um, the distance between these two points, you could calculate this vector called d uh, from distance. That is the difference between B and W. And after that, you calculate the module of uh, D, right? So that will be the distance between this, I uh, will take another call, between these two points, right? I mean, uh, these things are, uh, I believe, not so difficult to understand, but we will jump to. Uh, more difficult concepts uh, in a few moments, in a few minutes. So <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, very well. So uh, a very important concept in vectors uh, that is quite a more general idea than that we are uh, now going to say is a vector basis, right? So in order to create a vectorial space, you need a, a basis and we can think, think of a basis like the fundamental blocks that can build the entire space and for example in the in the in the examples we are we are going through i've been using the canonical basis that is uh, more the most common uh, basis to use since you are uh, the, it is built out of these vectors right so uh, this mean uh, here in the you can see the vectors. They are normally they are unitary vectors and they are also ortho or orthogonal, right? Since this angle is 90 degrees, uh, I will discuss the orthogonality uh, later a little more. So mm, that means uh, this means that you can write your vector right in like in this form. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, write down this expression, it is it's important to understand that this expression uh, depends on the basis you are using. Because, for example, uh, in this basis, you have uh, x coordinates and y, uh, y coordinates, right? That go, uh, are uh, for this basis. But if we change the basis, uh, the same vector can have different coordinates because you are using a different basis um here i have like a graphical uh, representation in order to understand that, that. so for example if, if we have uh, this vector here in, in this in this base right uh, but basically what we are saying is that we need three times this, this vector and also five times uh, five times this or, or another this other vector in order to build uh, the a our, our vector right so three times and also five times right and the, we have our our red vector but for example uh, we could choose because we have uh, our freedom to choose another basis that could be this b and w vector and then just another vectors i have put. i mean they are not the same as the other one these are just new random vectors i've chosen so in this base you could try to uh, do the calculation if you want, but uh, you will need just two B vectors and one double B, uh, W vector 
uh, in order to generate your your same vector. So the the important idea is that in order to generate a vector space, uh, you need like a basis that is just uh, elements of your uh, vector space that can build up your entire space and you the elements of your vector space can be written in terms of different bases but the the vector itself um, stays stays the same right the only thing is that the coordinates we use may change depending on the basis right that's a uh, important idea i would say so that's why i'm giving some emphasis also uh, an, an important concept in here is the linear independence so just go to the um, to the graphic representation in, in two dimension is quite trivial i would say because linear independence uh, is just uh, intuitive is an idea of vector that are independent but in, in what in, in what sense right so for example you have this red vector the red vector and the green one here they are linear independence right i mean they are not they are not independent right they are linear they are linear dependent right so sorry i i did a little mistake so they are linear dependent meaning that they are not linear independent right so why why is that so basically because uh the green vector that i i, I call here double uh, w one it is two times v one right so this is just two times v one so they uh, are they in some way they are correlated right uh, it's easy to see graphically that you can build one vector using uh, the other one because they are in like in the, in the same line so you just need to uh, multiply this vector in order to get the other one but for example if you take this rec vector and this other rec vector, there is no way you can obtain one vector by multiplying the other one, right? Because they have different direction. So they are linear independent, the, the two rec vectors. And for example, this other rec vector is again uh, not linear independent from this green vector. Very well. So uh, the proper or more uh, mathematical way to say this idea is to say if that two vectors, whatever they are, are linear independence vector. If I take a linear combination, right? A linear combination is just multiplying the vector by a coefficient, that is a number. And if this is equal to zero, it means that each coefficient must be zero and take for example uh, b1 and uh, alpha beta beta okay so we know the b1 and double u1 are uh, uh, not linearly independent right so this should mean that there must be there exists some alpha or beta different from zero that uh, make this equality true and that's easy to check since we have like alpha b1 and we know that double u1 is just two times b1 right so for example if i choose alpha equals one and beta equal minus one this will be zero since I am just subtracting the same vector. So I, I hope that uh, make a little more clear this uh, this definition of linear independence. But at the end, uh, what uh, should be in your head is that linear independence is that is just is well, it's just vectors that uh, you cannot build one vector out, out of the other one right that's the idea mm -hmm. all right so let's go move on to uh, the scalar product so this is also something that uh, i guess you might have seen before but simply the scalar product is an operation 
that we define in some way. Uh, normally, uh, when we talk about linear, uh, this kind of vector spaces, uh, the, the scalar product is defined in this way. So you take two vectors, and this dot here is not uh, it's not the like a normal multiplication dot in the sense that you multiply five five times two and you give you ten, right? It's not it's not that uh, multiplication sign. It's when you use this dot dot with vectors, it means a scalar product in, in this case. So if you take two vectors, these two vectors, right? Uh, the scalar the scalar product is it is fine in this way. I mean you, you just take first coordinate and multiply by this first coordinate and also and you sum it into the second coordinate multiplied by the other second coordinate. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you use the definitions we have seen before about the trigonometric stuff, like mm, in the fact in the uh, here if you if you use this right you could you could see easily more or less that at the end uh, this uh, calculation is equal to this expression where this angle is just the angle between these two vectors right uh, the this angle very well, so we can see that from the scalar product in, in some way, since we can calculate the angle from, from it, uh, it gives us a sense of uh, the geometry in the vector space, right? And this is an important, important concept, right? That we will also discuss later a little more. But uh, well, I hope everything is fine uh, so far. I mean, feel free to ask anything in Discord or whatever, or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, this is another fundamental idea that I have uh, mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, and it's orthonormal basis. An orthonormal basis is just a basis of your vector space that is orthogonal, and uh, the vectors are unitary. Right, so, I mean, the ortho comes from orthogonal, and the normal comes from uh, unitary vectors. I mean, unitary vectors are usually also called normalized normalized vectors, so that's why the orthonormal, right? So here are a few samples. Well, I mean, two examples of orthonormal basis. The first, um, well, no, uh, there is an example of orthonormal basis. That is the one that we have been using, the canonical basis. But for example, in here, there is another basis that is orthogonal, but it's not, uh, the vectors are, are not unitary since the, the, uh, the, the lens, right? The, the module is not one, it's bigger, right? So this would be an orthogonal basis, but not orthonormal since the the length of the vectors are bigger than one uh, um what's uh, the mathematical or, or how can we write this in an equation or a few equations so this is the way or to represent in equations an orthogonal orthonormal basis and it's just that when you have uh, orthogonality this means that the scalar product is zero and you can easily see that from here since if uh, these vectors were, were orthogonal, this would mean that uh, this angle should be uh, a pi and a half, pi half. So the cosinus of that angle will be zero. Mm -hmm. So for 90, 90 degrees, I don't know if you are used to talking about uh, angles in the, using uh, this uh, radians, right? Because this is this is vision on, on radian units, units. But I mean, the, if you have 90 degrees between your uh, vectors, the scalar product is going to be zero. So you have this property here that this is the orthogonality. Orthogonality. And also you have this other property, and this is the uh, normalization, if you want to. Yeah. 
normalization unitary vector. I mean, I know so because maybe I don't know if my, it, it may be confusing because I say this is normalization and also unitary vectors. Normally, uh, there are different ways to call to the more or less the same thing. So I will be using uh, different names. Maybe it's also good for you because you will be if, if you read anything, they will be using these uh, names. So that's good. Uh, but in order to write uh, in a more, I would say, uh, simple or well, not simple, but uh, without writing so much uh, in the paper, right? I mean, an easy way to write everything here because, for example, this is just a two, two dimensional case since we have two vectors in our, in our basis. Uh, we have uh, written four, four equations. If we have more vectors in our basis, uh, there will be more equations in order to uh, properly describe every scalar product. product. So it is normally, I mean, uh, every time in quantum mechanics you use this type of uh, notation that, for example, if we redefine, I mean, in here I'm just changing names. I mean, this this just, just means that I'm changing the name. I'm not doing any calculation. So if I change the name, I can write all these four equations using just this expression, right? And here, I don't know if this is the first time you uh, find this symbol here, but this is called uh, Kronecker deltas, and it's just a, a symbol that describes this function. Oh, well, we call, I mean, it's not exactly a function, it's like just uh, like a symbol, but this just means that this operation, oh, this is a, a error here. This should be J. Sorry for that. Very well. So if uh, A and J are not equal, this will be zero. And that is the case for, uh, let's see, I'm not yellow. This is the case for this one. All right. Uh, I'm writing these two equations out of this, uh, in this case, and also uh, in this other case, I'm writing these two equations. I hope, I don't know if this is too strange for you or not, or maybe this is too easy, <laughs> I don't know, but it's quite useful and we'll probably use, uh, use it again in the future. So uh, the Delta Kronecker is quite really, interesting mathematical uh, property um, so uh, until this point i have uh, discussed like different uh, aspects like the the module of a vector the scalar product uh, the concept of basis uh, also yeah so some uh, general uh, with some general concepts that uh, we can generalize right in order to describe uh, a vector space without uh, needing a concrete example because uh, yeah we have been following the typical uh, scale uh, Cartesian coordinates with vectors and um, just points in the space but that's not uh, everything in in the world the uh, things can get uh, a little crazy I would say so we are not going to go so far but we are going to present uh, a more general uh, description of vector spaces. So let's let's go, right? So now, uh, if you don't understand everything or whatever, feel free to ask me ask me anything. And also, uh, don't be worried. Uh, just try to get the idea that I will try to explain. So uh, and should be fine. So we will define a vector space called B as a set of at extract element that this access element can be, for example, points in the two-dimensional plane, as we have seen before, or can be other thing, right? Can be anything, right? So we will define our vector space B, B as a set of elements that can be added by an operation. We will denote by the that sign, I mean this, by this sign, the operation. 
Ah, oh, yeah. sorry. By this sign, uh, and it can be the sum, all right, like the the sum we are used to, but it not it might not be necessarily the ordinary sum that we are used to. So uh, that's why we don't say we are just going to be summing vectors. I mean, we are. Uh, it can be another type of operation. So just say a, a general operation, right? And all they can also be multiplied by elements of any field called uh, k right and when i say any field uh, take for example when we the other day we were discussing uh, uh, numbers like we were talking about real numbers uh, integers uh, rational numbers i mean the field key yeah it can be any set of numbers normally we work maybe with real numbers i mean k could be real numbers right or maybe also a complex number that we, it will be sure for in quantum mechanics complex numbers so k is a set of, of numbers and b is going to be our uh, vector space so and we have these two operations right one operation takes two vectors in another vector right this is the meaning i don't know also if you are used to this notation about writing like functions i would say so that it, this is the argument in the sense that it takes two vectors and it goes to another vector, for example. This would be B plus W equals D, right? For example, you take two vectors and you have you, you get another vector, right? And this, for example, you take a, a scalar, and a scalar is any, any number out of your field K, you take a scalar a vector and you get another vector and this could be for example three times b you get three b which is another vector right so uh, this is just examples in order for you to relate stuff mm, this operation must satisfy some properties yeah, it's an important property that we are i mean the, these properties are property that we are used to work with since we usually work i mean i have already used th those properties in, in, in the sample but in order to uh, define it uh, um, properly uh, we have to uh, give everything step by step right and say what can we do and what cannot we do in order to also general generalize to things that might be no so easy or so obvious so uh, understanding this we have the following uh, properties that at first uh, the our set of elements using this operation and this operation was the first one that right? like, takes two vectors into another vector must satisfy all these properties so here i'm not using this notation like using vectors with the arrow over the, the name of the vector, since uh, they might, I mean, vectors now, they are not this idea we have in mind, like an arrow, and that's our vector. Be vectors can be uh, different things. We will see uh, an example with matrices uh, uh, in a few moments. Uh, so I'm just calling elements like with different letters, and that these are the elements of our vectorial space. So for example, this property, I mean, this is quite, I mean, uh, someone could say this is quite uh, unnecessary to, to point out, but it's a property that is important in order to, to work with vector. And we are used to this. I mean, we are just saying that if we have three vector, it doesn't matter, right? If I do this or if I do that, I mean, I hope this seems, this first property is quite easy. To understand right so this is just the basic property that we are use uh, we use every day right also we, when we sum numbers so that's all that's that's that also the second property is quite important um i don't know how used you are i mean bagel for sure but <laughs> I, I guess but to read uh mathematical stuff but this means that uh there exists an element in your vectorial space called e for example such that e plus x equals uh, x plus e 
uh, equals x for all x in, in your vector space. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. So that's basically your element, your neutral, neut neutral element that we usually call zero, right? Zero vectorial or, or, or just zero. So it means in order to get a vectorial field, there must be an element that is zero, right? Is one uh, important rule. Another rule, for example, is for every x in your vectorial space, there must exist a negative x, a negative x equal to be another element of your vectorial space, such that x uh, fly, uh, plus negative x is going to be the same as x plus negative, uh, negative, uh, uh, negative x plus x is going to be equal to the neutral elements. And this is just like 5 and minus 5 equals 0 or b minus b equals 0, right? It's just that we are just writing this in the sense that instead of, of saying we have two operations, one, one is uh, summing or, or adding, and the other one is subtraction, right? Instead of saying we have two operations, we, ha we have just one operation that is adding numbers or vectors, right? Adding vectors, it was since we were speaking about vectors, but there is six, an element, that is called the inverse elements that when you sum those elements, you get the neutral uh, element, right? That's what we're saying. Uh, and also, how oh, we are on time. And also this important rule is that uh, this operation commutes. I mean, x plus uh, a is the same as x, uh, a plus x, right? Uh, yeah, so that uh, are the properties of an abelian group, right? Is just to name it, and it's not going. I mean, uh, I'm not going to use that name again, I believe, but it's just uh, for you to know, right? Um, very well. So that's <laughs> that's one part, all right. That's the part with the internal oper internal operation or internal composition. So with the external composition, you take a scalar. Uh, a vector and you you get another vector. There are also other properties that we are also used to work with, right? For example, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a number and you have some vectors. You have this uh, with a parenthesis uh, operation. You just multiply each of the vector by the number, right? For every alpha in your field K and for every uh, vector in your linear in your linear vector space. Um, also, this other property, you have two numbers multiplying. It's the same as multiply the number. After that, you multiply your vector for every number in your field and for every vector in your vector space, your linear vector space. Uh, uh, also, this property, you are summing all, uh, numbers in your field. is the same as multiplying uh, your vector for each of these numbers and then summing. And also, there must exist six um, an element in your field that is like the is it doesn't change the vector, and that will be like one, right? If you multiply something by one, it stays the same. Mm -hmm. So these are the properties that must be satisfied in order to have a linear vector space, right? So. Mm, I hope this is all fine. Remember that, uh, yeah, I, I don't have much to say here. Just here to uh, remember a little or for you to connect with other stuff. So we have vectors that are element of B, and we can add vector using this operation. And for example, this is an example that we have already seen at the beginning for you to maybe uh, see it more clearly. And in other side, in the other side, we have scalars, right? That are element of T. And this uh, product, see this dot here, refers to product by a scalar. Can it, uh, uh, be, be careful because uh, to pro product by a, a scalar is not the same as a scalar product, right? I mean, though it can be, I guess it can be kind of quite confusing at first, but it's, it's not the same, right? Because in here we are just meaning, we are multiplying by a number 
is is the meaning of, of this multiplying by a number. And here a few examples, for example, here I'm multiplying x by two times, and here I multiplying by three, also multiplying by two. I mean, just um, number multiplication because numbers are in this context they are usually called scalars, and they can either be real numbers or maybe complex number, right? Um, that's that's the idea. Right, right. Uh, for example, um, you can define a linear vector space that can be a two-dimensional square matrices, right? I mean, any every any matrix that you can write in this way. Oh, this should be oh my God, so so many <laughs> errors here. I mean, you can write any matrix in this way where a, B, C, D are reals. For example, we could we could write a basis of our vectorial space that could be this basis, where these mat matrices here are just uh, like uh, quite. This is will be this will be the canonical basis for this vectorial space since we are we are just uh, we are just writing uh, one and zero 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 one zero 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 right. So we can write any matrix as a, as a linear combination of these matrices. And why is this a vector space? So this is a vector space. Is we can uh, all the properties we have seen here, uh, they they are satisfied by this set of elements. So here you have an example of uh, a vector, a linear vector space that is not just uh, like let's say vectors in the sense that arrows with direction and that's that we are we are working with matrices right and in, in fact uh, this is a four dimensional vector space since the basis is made out of four elements right so um, yeah so that's that's the sample they take care that uh, i'm writing here the matrix as a vector right because it is a vector but not in the sense of an arrow is a vector in the sense of in the sense of an element of our linear vectorial space that is made out of these matrices matrices here. Uh, so this means that we are writing this linear combination. Mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure, right? So let's move on. So let's let's get uh, <laughs> let's add more things to our a linear vector space because we need more stuff in order to properly work with vectorial spaces. Uh, and now we introduce Euclidean vector space. So right now, if you take uh, B and the field K, right, mask, uh, we are going to add another operation that is going to be. We are going to write it in this way, right? We, we I, I could have chosen another way of writing the operation. I mean, at the end, uh, the symbols you use is not that relevant. It's just the, the notation, right, for writing stuff. So you can write the same using different symbols. But in this case, I will be using this one. And this is going to be the scalar product, right? A general scalar product. I mean, I'm not saying this is the same scalar product I, I have defined before because that was a concrete example for the two dimensional plane. So in here, I just uh, naming a general scalar product. So if you have a, a set of element B, uh, a field uh, K, that are going to be uh, a linear vector space satisfying the properties we have already seen. And now you add this scalar product. Mm? Uh, a scalar product is just an operation that takes Two element of B and give you a scalar, right? That's that, that, that's the reason it's called a scalar product because it takes two vectors of your space and it gives you uh, a, a scalar, right? So in order to be called a scalar product, it cannot be any operation. It must satisfy certain properties. So here you have uh, the properties that are not, uh, it must satisfy. It must be positive if you are applying it to the same vector. If you have here a number, uh, an scalar, 
it can go outside multiplying uh, this I and mean, this is just uh, operation i mean it, the scalar product is also linear in the first term meaning that you can uh, take this outside but uh, yeah for, for example this other property means that if you if the scalar product is zero using the same same vector it means that that vector is zero and also this property uh, this is the complex conjugate that we were seeing the other day in complex number i mean it's just uh, yeah the con because this is if, if this number is a complex number it means that if you ch change the vectors here if you are going to get the complex conjugate of the vector right and these are the other properties uh, we will work with a concrete uh, in quantum mechanics we will work in qu uh, for quantum computing we will work with a concrete uh, scalar product so uh, that will satisfy everything so no need to worry about that <sighs> very well so in the uh, right uh, very well so now uh, we, what we have we have our linear vector space hmm, with our set of abstract uh, elements and our field k and we have also added the scalar product so from the scalar product, we can induce what is called a norm, right? I'm going to denote the norm by this symbol. And the norm is just this operation. It takes one vector of your linear vector space or your Euclidean vector space, if you have the scalar product that we have, and it takes you to the real numbers. Mm -hmm. To the real numbers important it doesn't matter if the field is uh the complex is i mean is k is if k is uh the complex numbers uh this will still take your numbers to real numbers that's that's important so uh how do we define the norm out of our scalar product so just following this I mean, if you have a scalar product you just uh, the norm is defined in this way because the norm is another uh, uh, function, if you want to say, that must satisfy certain properties. So if you have an, a scalar product and you define the norm in, in this way, the norm will satisfy all the properties that it must satisfy and that we are not going to discuss because they are not really that necessary. But just taking account that this is going to be the norm and the norm is what gave us a sense of distant distance in our uh, space our euclidean space or linear vector space or yeah so uh, yeah in, in the euclidean space so for example remember when we were talking about this right because uh i the notation here i guess it might be confusing but i'm just using the notation as we i i, I have been taught in high school, right? So I don't know if you have been using another notation or not, but when we write the module of a vector, like coming back to the example we were uh, looking at the beginning, we normally write it in this way, right? So, but this is the same as this, but for the concrete case of the two dimensional space that we were using that uh, points in Cartesian coordinates for vectors like arrows. In that concrete case, uh, the norm is the same as the module. So we were just defining the module in this way. And if you notice, if you, uh, the, we were also defining the scalar product in this way. So if you take the scalar product of the same vector, let's say I want what well, it will be S1 times x1 and this uh, yes right but this is this uh, you get every term a square and if you take the square root of everything so you get uh, the module right you get this i don't know if uh, it's clear but you see that uh, we are defining 
the the module here yeah in the same way as i'm defining here but in here i'm not specifying the scalar product that's the difference i'm talking about a general scalar product that can be different from this one mm -hmm. and that must it must satisfy some properties right we have seen here this property but it can be another scalar product mm -hmm. right uh they were mm -hmm. so um when we have a norm mm -hmm. we have the norm we have just discussed you can also define a distance mm -hmm. and that's why i was saying that the norm was giving us the sense of uh yeah sense, sense of distance no right the the length of the the vector right so the norm is the one that gives us the sense of distance in the in the Hilbert, in the in the Euclidean space. Mm, so if we have a norm, we can define a distance, and the distance is defined as follows: you just you, you it takes two vectors, and also they take them to the real numbers, and uh, it's just the difference between these two vectors, and then you calculate the norm. And this was exactly the same uh, when I was talking about the algorithm. If you want to calculate the distance be between two points in the Cartesian space. You just uh, calculate the difference. And then after that, you calculate the the module of of the vector, uh, of the res resulting vector. So this is exactly the same, right? If you like, because what I'm doing here is calculate the module of vector B minus vector W, right? This is exactly the same. The difference is just that we are using a norm that is not exactly this one, since it's, it, it comes from a general scalar product, but we haven't defined exactly. We have just said the property that it must satisfy. Mm, very well. Let's move on. All right. So in here, uh, I'm not really going to talk about topology, because topology is quite a uh, more difficult thing, I would say, and also not so necessary in quantum computing for uh, really introdu intro introductory and practical purposes. But it is in quite really important in order to prove, um, to understand many things when you get to more general and complicated uh, Hilbert spaces that we are going to see. Uh, in the following slides, right? But basically, to have an idea of topology, even though even though we are not going to go deep in that, when you have a scalar product, we have defined a norm, and with the norm, we have defined a distance. All right. So with the distance or the norm, because you can define uh, the distance with the norm, you can start talking about topology, and topology. <laughs> topology <laughs> is just um uh, how, how to say well I, I have written here in some way it refers to your space like mm, the properties in with continuity and convergence and in, in one sense for example let's imagine you have here this is your space <laughs> this, this is your space for example but your space might have a hole in the middle. Hmm? Well, let's paint it. And the hole means that, for example, this this blue dot, uh, this red dot, is a ele is an element of your space. This red dot is another element. But if you have a dot here, it won't be an element of your space. So, for example, if you want to go from this point to uh, if you want to go from this point to this other point you cannot really go following a straight line because there is a hole in your uh, space so um, topology is the branch of mathematics that studies this uh, kind of uh, things like trying to make everything continue with the continuity of the space so you can like give uh, really small steps and a approach to every point 
in your space without fi uh, finding any holes. Mm -hmm. um, that's more or less like very, uh, I don't know, uh, very super superficial idea of topology. Um, that's everything I'm going to say, I believe. And so here we are with Hilbert Spaces uh, at, at the end. <laughs> Uh, so what's a Hilbert space? So a Hilbert space is just an Euclidean space, meaning you have a linear vector space with an scalar product, and you can define a norm and a distance that is complete. Mm? And I have not defined what is complete. I have not, because I have not talked about topology because in order to properly introduce this, I will have to talk about Cauchy series, um, some mathematical stuff that is quite more, I would say, advanced, maybe um, difficult to understand. And it will be really necessary for any quantum computing, at least for this introductory course. So, but for you to have the idea complete, it means that it, it doesn't have any holes <laughs> in the in your space. So you can move from one element to the, of, of in your space to another element following a straight line or whatever you want. So the always assist a, a curve in your space that you can uh, con with uh, with following some uh, continuity right you can go to some point to another one that's the idea of complete there are for sure uh, more things to say about completeness in Hilbert spaces and that but as i say it's not going to be uh, important or for us because this is quite an introductory course right so we are not going to talk deeply about that and the important thing about hybrid spaces is that uh, every time in quantum physics, quantum mechanics, when we work with any quantum system, let's say uh, electron or some properties of the electron or, or quarks, everything, they are all Hilbert spaces. E everything. In, it depends. I mean, they, they are different types of Hilbert spaces because we, we can find finite dimension Hilbert spaces that that's those are the ones that we are going to be dealing in quantum computing in, in this course but you can also find infinite dimension Hilbert spaces and those those are uh, I would say uh, trickier to understand and also they are more uh, you, you must be more careful when you have uh, infinite infinite dimensions but we are also not going to be dealing with that uh, and also I mean I, I, I have said we are not going to be uh, really discussing topological properties in Hilbert spaces. So yeah. So just finally, in order to summarize the important things, because I have said a lot of things, in order to summarize a little, uh, to compare with the example, in order to, uh, I believe, like to uh, make things clear, we have linear vector space is a set of abstract elements that can be different things. They can be arrows, they can be matrices, they can be even functions, right? I mean, they can be a lot of different stuff. They are elements of our vector of uh, a set. We also have our field K, that is a set of numbers, either a real number, complex number, or any other set of numbers. And we define two operations that must satisfy the properties we have discussed. This would be equal, right? Or the, we can relate this to the example we were looking, uh, we were seeing at first, that we have points, we have our vectors that are arrows that you can sum the vectors, you can uh, multiply them by numbers, right? This is uh, the corresponding example, right? So if we have a linear vector space, we can define the scalar product. That is an operation that takes two vectors and gives you a scalar, right? If you have a scalar product satisfying the properties that a scalar product must satisfy, you have an Euclidean space. And the, in, in this easy or toy example, the scalar product is defined in this way, right? So once you have a scalar product, you can define the norm and with the norm, you can define the distance. And with that, you can start talking about topology that we, ha we haven't really discussed a lot, but with 
with topology, you can start talking about Hilbert spaces combined with this Euclidean space idea. But anyway, as we have, I, I have already said, what we are going to use is basically what you find in this slide. I mean, this idea of, all right, linear vector space. We add a scalar product. We get an Euclidean space. And if we have, uh, with the Euclidean space, we have defined the norm, the distance. We have some topological properties that are good for our Hilbert space. And we have the Hilbert space. That's that's the idea. We are going to be working with the norm. Uh, the distance, not so much, but the, the norm is going to be quite fundamental for, for us in quantum mechanics. Uh, I mean, and here is the example. I mean, you have the module of a vector, and uh, also the distance be between two points calculated at the difference of the module of the difference between two vectors. Um, that's that's the overall of this day, I would say. Uh, this will be the end of day two. So if there are any questions, if there is anything you would like to say in the the channel, Discord channel, or open your microphone if you want or if you are able to. And if there are no questions, I will see you in the next one.